going on here? So you should see the Your Favorite Track um, page right now. So again, we get through this. That's where we're going. Um, I'm going to start. There's going to be a couple of topics here tonight. We're going to kind of show you uh, season management, um, basically how to create and configure a new season management. Um, we're going to give you a short preview of registration. I'll cover pre uh, registration more in depth um, this evening at 730. I'm going to add a schedule and add events to the schedule, edit those events, things of that nature. I'll show you the generic um, profile, um, so how you can edit your profile, um, view and change billing information, add site admins. We'll go through MRP rewards, and I'll show you um, MRP fantasy and fantasy prizes as well. So that's kind of what we got on the docket for this one. Um, and again, if you got questions, put them in Messenger um, or put them in the messaging um, application that they've got in Google Meet or, um, or save them to the end. We'll have a Q&A at the end as well. So we'll jump in here, um, and I'm going to jump right into um, creating a new season in season management. I'm actually going to use your favorite series. We've got two of them here. You've got your favorite track and your favorite series. Um, it's what we use for our demo environment, and it should respond and, and act exactly the same way that, uh, that your guys' tracks and series do. I'll start with a series, though. Um, first off, we'll start on this main dashboard page of the series. It should look familiar. Uh, it's exactly the same as your guys' and all the buttons that are in here. Um, the buttons just below the headline image correspond to buttons that are in the upper left, so season management, race management. Um, your profile will be your track's logo or your series logo. And then, of course, the website functions as well in web management. Um, app favorites, this will show you how many people have searched for your tracks or series in the app and favorited it. Um, so they're getting push notifications when you do news releases or things of that nature. Um, rewards information is down here. We'll go through that, through that uh, more, you know, more in-depth later on. Your current subscription will be listed here. And then the sandbox. Um, the sandbox environment is an exact copy of um, all of the information that uh, will be in the live environment. It'll just be in a silo demo environment. So if you want to do things like test lineups um, or test, uh, you know, different you know race functions or whatever else or how changing something will affect your points or whatever else that's a good place to go for testing because what you do there won't get pushed to the live environment uh, moving forward from there um, i will start with uh, creating a new season and configuring a new season um, right in here so we'll go into season management first um, you'll see the season that i and this is why i'm using your favorite series for this we don't have anything updated for 2021 yet um, so you, the first thing you want to do is create that new season. As I hit this drop down in the upper left, um, the 2019 information is there. Um, all of the seasons that you've had in my race pass, all of the information will be here. So you can go back and look at the historical records and historical data. Um, it, that includes Badger Midgets who have been racing since the Ford Model T was invented. Um, so they can go to like 1936 and see all of their information in there. Um, but we'll jump in. We'll create our new season here. We're going to leave the year 2021. That's when it takes place. Um, the season name, generally, um, we advise people to not mess with too much, um, mostly because it's not public facing and you want it to make sense for you. And the start and end dates of the season, a lot of times what we'll see is tracks will try to change these dates um, to conform with when their schedule is going to start, when their schedule is going to end. Um, I, I really would just advise you to leave it the way they are. That way, if you want to add something like a banquet or a fall special or something like that, you won't have a situation where you add an event and it doesn't show up. So just leave this as, as the entire year. So we'll go ahead and add that. And it'll immediately take us to this page where we can start to uh, configure. All of these links will take you to configure. So we'll just jump to that tab right now. And you'll be able to do all of the things that you want to do. Um, the real difference between a track and a series in this case is season tracks is going to have your track listed if you're a racetrack. Whereas a season series will obviously just have uh, your series listed here as well, and along with any classes that you're going to run. Um, so if I was going to do this uh, with, with my favorite track here and go to configure, I would my track would be listed by default. I would add any series that I'm going to run throughout the year, and I would add any classes that I'm going to run throughout the year. Um, whereas with the series... Um, it would be just the opposite. The series is here listed by default, and I'm going to add any tracks that I'm going to run throughout the course of the year here, along with any classes that are going to travel with my series. Um, you'll see by default, when you hit add tracks, all of the tracks that that series has been to before, and it worked the same with tracks, all the series that have raced at that racetrack before, will show up here by default to make it easier to pick things that, you, you know, that you've, you've been to in the past. Um, you can also hit more. 
and you can go to all tracks and you can search for track names. So if I wanted to go to Jackson Motor Speedway in Mississippi, there we go, we're right there. Um, you can do all of those things. Um, and of course you can go to season tracks as well. So if you know that you were at a racetrack during one specific season and you wanna go back to that track, it makes it easier for you to see where you've been in the past. I'm just gonna to go to your favorite track here. And again, adding classes, um, this is important because when you're creating events later on, when you're, uh, when you're creating your schedule, the season classes that are listed here will be the classes that you have to choose from when you're creating your events. So you wanna make sure that when you're doing this initial configuration, um, I will, um, uh, you know, when you're doing the initial uh, season configuration, you want to make sure you've got all the information here. It makes adding events later on a lot uh, easier. Um, I mean, my, my camera's off. That's why you can't see me. I can turn it on for a second if you want. Hi, everybody. There I am. I'm going to leave that off because I'm going bald. Um, but we'll kind of move forward here. So that's just the generic uh, way to start. For this purpose, um, I'm actually going to run a different class here. Got to save your changes before. So I'm just going to add 410 wing sprint cars, and now your favorite series is a 410 wing sprint car series. Um, that's the name of the series, and that's the track that it's going to go to. And, of course, when you go to season setup, it'll be just the same. If you add a series, it will automatically add the class as well that's part of that series. In this case, it didn't change for me because I already had that series selected, so the update didn't come through. I would actually have to deselect that series and then add it again. Um, but you'll be able to see that, you know, that's what it does for everybody. If I add an ASCS series, it'll automatically add 360 sprint cars as well. Um, so that's de definitely something to keep an eye on. So those are really the initial steps of setting up a new season for yourself, um, creating, you know, your season and, and things of that nature. I'm going to jump to events next because I want to show you the process of adding a schedule and adding events to that schedule. I'm actually going to do this with my racetrack here. I'll go to my 2021 season. I already have events showing here. Um, so I'm just going to add the schedule here, actually, with my series. Um, year is 2021. You want to make sure that, you know, that stays with uh, wherever you're going to, um, or, you know, whatever whatever season you're, you're a part of. Um, so you can create them in advance, um, but, you know, just be mindful of the fact that you're putting the schedule and the season and the right dates. Um, you want to name it whatever you can name it. The description um, basically is what the fans will see when they go to the MRP app and they um, and you can, you know, and, and then they can, they'll click on your that schedule and this is the description that they'll see. Um, so that's a definitely, uh, you know, you if you want to put something in there, as, you know, for things like, you know, this is what seating looks like, or we're going to have fireworks every Friday or something like that, you know, something like that you can definitely put in there. Uh, in terms of active, um, the difference between an active and an inactive schedule uh, is, be, is if it shows on the app and it shows on a website, if you've got a website. Now, the reason that folks would make it inactive so it didn't show is, uh, and I always say that the reason to add a multiple schedules is if you're calculating multiple points championships throughout the season, um, so if you've got your regular full-time, um, you know, series schedule or, or track schedule, and then you also have a speed week, if you're calculating that speed week um, points outside of the, you know, regular season points, then that would be a reason to have two schedules. If you're a traveling series and you have regions that break off of your, you know, your main, uh, your main series schedule, multiple points, championships, um, or something like a special event, we'll have instances where a track will run a three-day special event. And on the third day, they'll actually use the combined points from the first two nights to line up the third night. So it would be another reason to have a new schedule. But if you don't want that schedule to show in the app or on your website, you would make it inactive for that reason. There's really no reason to turn off pull stats. Um, you're going to want the stats to you know, permeate through the MRP network. So you're going to want to leave stats turned on there. Um, and then fantasy leaderboards. Um, every schedule that you have will, by default, pull a new MRP fantasy leaderboard. We put a ton of work into fantasy. Um, so, you know, we're, we're, we're really excited about it. We know a lot of tracks and series and drivers are really excited about it as well. So if you want the schedule that you're creating to by default, pull its own fantasy leaderboard and award a fantasy champion, um, you leave that turned on as well. So we'll add this 2021 schedule. And there we go. Schedules created. You can add a second schedule if you'd like. 
Um, but really, we want to add events. So the zero to total events right now, we use the green add events button. And adding events is really seamless and easy here in my race pass. Um, you're just going to start by selecting the dates you want your events to be on. Add a catchy uh, name for your event. Um, you can name it whatever you'd like. You can see that uh, all the series that I had in configuration and all of the classes that I had in configuration are what show by default here because I only had your favorite series and I only had sport compacts. That's what's showing here. Add additional details about the event. Again, this is where a fan goes to the app or your website and clicks on the event title. They'll see this description. So if you've got, you know, if it's in coordination with the state fair and you've got rides and funnel cakes and vendors, or you want to list your purse or whatever else, whatever information you want fans to see about the event when they click on it. And then because I'm the series, I can't uh, do the pit gates or the main gates. So I'll actually come back here so you can see that to my track as opposed to my series. If I want to add a new uh, event here, you'll see that I can also set pit gates, uh, main gates, hot laps, and when racing starts. Um, those are all sticky options, the uh, the times and the classes. So when I you know add my first event and you selected four events to go through, um, the times are sticky, so they'll stay the same. So you don't have to continue to re-add them every time. Same with the classes, although they will still be editable as well. So you can go in and edit them if you'd like to. So I'll kind of show you that as well. So if we said, you know, we wanted our pits to open at three o'clock, our main gates to open at five o'clock, hot laps at 6.30 and racing at seven, we could, uh, Add all of those things in. We'll run our stock cars. When you hit add in next, you'll be able to see the classes and the times are sticky, so they're right there. And that really is um, what it comes down to in terms of adding your adding a schedule. It's really slick. It's really fast. It's really easy. Um, it's easy to do. Perfect. We added three more events to our schedule there. Um, I'm going to show you a little short um, look at registration as well. Um, and when I jump to registrations here, um, and again, if you've got any questions about any of these things, you know, definitely put them in the put them in the chat, and, and we'll get to them. If I'm going to add a registration, there's three different kinds of registrations to add, and I'm going to give you kind of a brief uh, preview of registration here because I'm going to cover it more in depth um, tonight at the 7:30 session. Um, there's two different kinds of registrations that you can have. There's a yearly registration, which uh, you can see that I've got created here. Um, your driver's registered to race at your track on an annual basis once a year. You can charge for this kind of registration. You can have it open and close on certain dates. Um, you can change the charge based on the classes that you're running, other things of that nature. So there's a lot of options there. Um, and that's an, an annual once a year registration. There's also an event-specific registration that you can tie to one specific event. Um, so if you're going to have drivers enter for one event outside of the, the entire year, you can charge for it exactly the same, gather all the same information. Um, and that way you can only make drivers uh, register for that one event. And there's also a third type of registration, which we call a general registration. And basically any use for it you have outside of those two uses that we talked about um, is what you would use it for. I've seen it used for banquets. I've seen it used for uh, for pit passes and situations where COVID is an issue and you can only have so many people there so you can see who's going to be there and things of that nature. Um, I've seen it used for a number of different things like that. Um, so, you know, wherever, if you have a, an issue where you want to try to track information from people who are coming to something that you guys are doing and it's not tied to your annual registration or one specific event, you can do it that way. Um, I've also seen it used for a series that has multiple regions. Um, something like ASCS, and they want drivers to register for individual regions. I've seen uh, I've seen general registrations used for that as well. So you know, just an idea there for you. Um, and then drivers go online, they register, they'll enter um, you know the obvious information, their name, the top three options for the number that they want to run for the year. Um, the, you can also enter their address, their phone number, owner information, 
jacket size, um, all sorts of things like that. There's a new option on registration. Um, it's just forms and it's a checkbox, yes or no, during the confirmation process. Um, and that's a way to track paper forms that are going to be collected outside of my race pass, things like tax information or pit stall registrations or things of that nature. If they have a paper form that they need turned in, you can select that yes or no when you're confirming the registration and it'll show up in their entries as well, has forms and you can see if they've turned in the forms that they need. Just kind of another thing to check at that back gate. And like I said, we'll go through registrations more in depth um, tonight, um, but I just wanted to give you a, a general and quick overview of it as well here. Um, that's largely uh, creating a season, adding events to that season, and uh, the registration as well. Um, to add a registration, it's fairly straightforward. I already have a, an annual one here. Um, you can add an event registration. Um, when you see you add an event registration, you'll put in the uh, you know the day that you want the event. Oh, I have to do it by date. Okay. What? There it is. Okay. So if I want to add a registration for my stock car special, I could do it that way. Charge whatever you'd like to charge. Um, put in, you know, when it's late, if there's a late fee, things of that nature, when it opens, when it closes. Um, when you charge for a registration and a driver registers, my race pass collects the funds and then disperses those funds to you via PayPal. Um, so you have to have a PayPal account. It has to be set up. Send us the email address associated with your PayPal account. And then uh, we'll be able to uh, utilize that to give you the registration funds. And actually, merchandise funds work the same way. So there's multiple uses for that PayPal account. We do tickets a little bit differently. That's through ACH. And I'll talk more about that. Tonight, actually, we'll talk about adding tickets and an in-depth look at online tickets as well. In terms of profile information, kind of take you through um, looking at your profile, making annotations, um, adding information, and whatever else. You definitely want to make sure this is up to date. Now, granted, this is this is not information that's going to change very often, um, you know, unless you cut down the size of your racetrack or, or we all decide as, an, as a society that we're going to change the way grid lines work for Google Maps or things of that nature. It, re it really won't change much, but it's a good idea at least once a year at the beginning of the year to come in here and make sure it's all accurate and it's the way you want it. When we initially come to your, uh, your profile here, You'll be able to edit the profile image if you'd like. The profile image is the thumbnail image um, that shows up when folks search for your track in the app or, or wherever else. You can update the header image, which is the larger image across the top. After someone's clicked on your track or association, you'll be, they'll see the header image. Um, and then edit profile. Um, if you hit edit now and edit profile, it takes you to this tab that says profile. So we'll edit now on the profile. It takes you here. And this is where you put in um, the information that fans will see in the app when they click on your racetrack. The, uh, the, the information, you can add any description that you want. That's a, that's a free sell. You can type whatever you want in there. Your track length, banking, whatever else. You can put um, really any information that fits, uh, fits the best for you. Uh, right down to the dirt. The year it opened, all of those things. The physical address, as we mentioned, unless you physically pick up your racetrack and move it somewhere else or we all decide latitude and longitude are going to change. This largely won't change. But you can put in your address. You can put in the latitude and longitude lines, um, elevation if you'd like, Google Maps directions, whatever else. You can put it all in from there. And then the track features. And this is probably some of the more important information because this is, you know, the questions that fans are going to have. Do you offer camping? Um, is it a family or reserve seating? Is there a kid's play area? Do you have restrooms? You have an ATM, do you accept credit cards, those kinds of things. Um, and, and those are good things for fans to know before they show up. And then, you know, what night you typically race on is, a, is a added in here as well. We've recently added um, what type of surface the, the pit area is. Um, so you can, you know, if it's paved or if it's concrete or if there's concrete stalls or whatever. And then uh, if there's tires available at the track, we've added that as well. And then, of course, if there's MRP cards accepted and things of that nature. An alias comes into play if at any point in the past your track or your series was known by a different name. If a fan goes in and searches for that old name, not, really, not realizing there's been a name change, um, if they search for the alias, it'll still bring them to your track and the correct profile. Um, so if it ever, if, you know, if you're in a situation where you've had a name change, it's good to add that in here um, just to make sure that fans can find the correct, uh, the correct information. We jump into the billing section. 
Um, you'll be able to see here in billing what your current subscription is, all of your previous invoices, and update the card on file if need be. Um, you can also change your plan here. So if you're moving up or down or wherever else, um, you, know, you can come in here and select the plan. Um, if you select a plan, um, just to be forewarned and you change your plan, especially if you change down, you're going to end up getting a call from Chris Krug or myself and they'll, and we'll kind of, you know, make sure you have all the options available to you. In the end, we want to make sure that you guys are all making the most informed decision you possibly can um, and doing what's best for you in your racetrack or your association. Um, but that's where you can go to change this information. There's also a rewards area where you can earn rewards, uh, basically $50 off for, uh, for, you know, basically just for utilizing the program. If you schedule a certain number of events uh, in my race pass and use MRP Live, you'll end up getting $50 off. If you have online tickets associated with a certain number of events um, and, and you only complete that goal, you can get uh, a certain amount of money off. If you have a if you have merchandise in the MRP marketplace and you're selling your stuff on our website through our designs, you can qualify for fifty dollars off. So you can see that you know you can end up just by doing these small things, you can end up getting one hundred fifty dollars. And when we're talking about the number of events, scheduling events doesn't cost you anything extra. Using MRP Live that doesn't cost you anything extra. Okay, if you do those two things that are built in the program, that's fifty dollars off. Adding online tickets doesn't cost you anything extra. It's a feature of the program. It's built in. So you'll get another $50 off just for doing that stuff. So we're not talking about, you know, going above and beyond and spending money. I mean, with the merchandise, it costs a little bit to be part of our merchandise store. Um, but for a lot of these things, it's, it's not going to cost you anything to do. So it's definitely something to pay attention to and see if you can get yourself a discount that way for the subsequent season. Uh, in terms of site admins, um, we can show you that as well. That's where you come to users. And you can add your site admins. There's two different kinds of roles that exist in my race pass. A standard admin is somebody who has access to the back end of the program um, to do these things, to be an administrator, to you know add tickets, to create a schedule, to you know do all of those things that need to be done on the back end of the program. And there's also a site member, and a site member has no access. Basically, what that means is that somebody who has a MyRacePass account that they are logged into visited your website. So don't you know. If you see a whole bunch of site admins on your site and you think, oh, these people can do, they're, they're, they can't do or access anything on the back end of the program at all. They have to be a standard admin. In terms of adding a new member, fairly easy to do. Type in their email address. I'll use myself as an example. I've got a MyRacePass account, so my information shows up by default. I press link account. That person is now, um, you know, now is an admin at your racetrack. If you go to add a, uh, add someone, That does not have a, uh, a MyRacePass account already, it'll prompt you to enter their first name and last name and the role that you want them to have, and it'll send them an invite to create a MyRacePass account. So pretty self-explanatory and straightforward information there. Again, you want to make sure that you know you curate your list of admins. If you you know if you fire a score, make sure they don't have access to your website anymore. Those kinds of things. The things to be on top of. And if you have any questions about that process and those things come up, you know, get a hold of me, get a hold of Chris Krug, and, uh, and we'll be happy to help you. Um, one of the other things that I wanted to show you in a really in depth way was the uh, MRP Fantasy. Um, we mentioned we've added Fantasy, we've added a lot of things to Fantasy, and I kind of want to show you some of these things as well. So I'll go to Season Management, I'll go to Fantasy. I don't want to do that in the spring season, I want to do that in the winter season here. Go to Fantasy, add leaderboard. As we mentioned, every uh, schedule that you create will have its own leaderboard by default. So when the first event rolls around, people will still be able to make fantasy picks. And adding multiple schedules. Um, well, adding multiple schedules will allow for multiple fantasy competitions to be going on at the same time. Um, so if you have a series within a, uh, a season or something like that, um, you can you know continue working that way. Um, you can add, you can select what classes you want to be part of that fantasy season, um, or you can even do a custom date range. So if you're going to have you know a big event that goes over a couple of days, it's not going to be its own schedule. Um, you can add a fantasy group just for that date range, um, and and have your fans compete there as well. Um, one of the nice things about fantasy that I know a lot of track owners definitely like is um, when you when, when, I guess when fans come to your racetrack 
and have their phone location services turned on, which most everybody does anymore. Um, anybody who's at the racetrack gets bonus points in fantasy. So people who are supporting you at the track are also getting a little bit of an extra bump in fantasy. Um, so if you are doing rewards, um, you know, you can, you can, it's, it's most likely going to benefit the people who are at your racetrack more often than not and are paying attention to what you're doing more often than not. So you're rewarding the people who are supporting you the most. Going through some of these options, you can add prizes in fantasy for any position that you'd like to. You can add it for second, third, fifth, anybody. Excuse me for one moment here. Um, you can um, <clears throat> enter the prize type, tickets, gift cards, concession stand, merchandise, whatever, other if you select other, you can add a title and a description as well. And then uh, what it's valued at. To give you an example or an idea of what we're doing for fantasy, um, you were all able to see Chili Bowl stuff going on. Uh, so we gave away a bunch of tickets and things like that for Chili Bowl. And we actually gave away a trophy as well. So if you wanted to have a trophy made. One of the things that one of the racetracks that I'm working for is doing is for our big World of Outlaw event. We're actually getting a, a VP Racing Fuels jug and having all of the A-Main starters sign it and giving that away to our fantasy champion. So going to cost us $15, and some, uh, some, some guy at the track is going to have what he thinks is a really awesome thing for his basement or his man cave or garage or whatever. Uh, again, it costs us $15. So you can get creative with your fantasy prizes like that. And I think that'll make a difference. One other thing that you can look at is if you're one of the racetracks that gives away lucky number program prizes, um, you can start – if, if you know, sponsors are donating merchandise for you for the program prizes and you're ending up where your announcer is just reading a whole bunch of numbers all night long and it kind of gets monotonous and people tune it out, you can start giving some of those things away via fantasy as well. And then you can add, <clears throat> you know, in your title for your fantasy group, you can add, you know, Bob's Garage – gift certificate for fantasy or whatever else. And so Bob's garage will be the title sponsor of your fantasy group. He'll, you'll be able to sell advertising that way and, and give out the merchandise in a different way. So things to keep in mind there in terms of fantasy, our winner will get a cash prize. I don't know, We'll go ahead and add that, and we'll add that for position number one. There we go. So we've got a fantasy prize um, right there. You can create as many prizes as you want. So if you've got stuff to give away to 10 people, you can give it away to 10 people like that. And, again, you can sell sponsorship this way because when folks go into the app and they start playing MRP Fantasy and they click on your racetrack, that fantasy group will have a headline sponsor if you put it into that field. And you can sell advertising that way. It's another line of revenue potentially for you. The leaderboard doesn't have any groups yet because we haven't run any races. But eventually, when you start running races, you'll be able to see what events go into that fantasy um, that fantasy group, similarly to the way you can in points already. And again, you'll be able to see the standings here as well. Um, so those are uh, definitely something to um, something to take a look at. And you can also send push notifications right here. So um, if you want to, you know, advertise to the people who have favorited your app that you're going to have some kind of fantasy group or things of that nature, um, you can send them the push notification right here, and they'll be able to get it and receive it. And those are, uh, you know, this a lot of this stuff is very new. A lot of this stuff was built out really from Chili Bowl, and that's how new it is, you know, a month and a half old. And it's something we're really excited about. <clears throat> One thing that we've seen with it is that actually at Chili Bowl and at a couple of events since then, there's actually been drivers who have put on their social media pages, hey, you know, pick me at MRP Fantasy. And what that's allowed for is that's free advertising for the track and event. You know, if, if drivers are excited about putting your event on social media in any capacity, that only helps you guys as well. <clears throat> Does anybody have any questions they want to put in the chat regarding fantasy right now or regarding setting up a season that we can answer quickly here before we move on?
Okay, I'll take that as a no. And I apologize for the voice difficulties. My goodness, it has been a long week for me talking. You'd think a guy who's an announcer would be able to do that for a longer period of time, but I guess not. <clears throat> so since we're through some of this stuff, um, I, I wanna, I'm want i going to take a little bit deeper look right now at, um, at some of the stuff in the settings area. <clears throat> Things like points and pay schemes and lineup settings and managing classes. Just so a few guys, um, you know, need to change any of those settings, you know where to look. We'll start off with managing classes. It's a good way to rename your classes, whatever you like them to be. And also um, add classes to choose from as well. Most of what this is used for at this point is the name override section. That's good for things like um, if you have sponsors for your classes, if you're going to have the Bob's Garage stock cars instead of the stock cars, you can come in here and you can change this to Bob's Garage stock cars. <clears throat> and what that will do is on the app, on your admin side, basically everywhere you look <clears throat> and everywhere fans look, most importantly, you'll now see the headline sponsor for the class as opposed to just the class title. Or also, <clears throat> if you have a, a class name that's unique to your racetrack or we don't have in the program already, you can use the overrides to... Um, you can use the overrides to add that class in. For instance, if your B modifieds are named something like Super Limiteds or Econo Mods or something like that, you can change that name here. That way, everybody looking at lineups and results and everything else, they'll know exactly what they're looking at as well. You can change things like if each one of the classes that's going to be racing with you has their own pill draw. If this class doesn't have a pill draw, you can remove it here and then add a pill draw for all of the other classes, this class would be uh, removed. If they use transponders or not, if they run weekly or not, which is information that will show in the app, and then if they're active or not as well. If you have a class that used to run your track, you don't want to accidentally select them anymore moving forward, just make them inactive, though. Um, they'll no longer be there as well. So that's uh, one piece of settings, the class name overrides, um, and again, it's really, really great for another line of advertising, another line of revenue. You can advertise the class titles. We'll jump into our points and pay schemes. This is definitely something that you want to keep an eye on as well um, in creating a scheme. There's a lot of schemes in here already, um, but we'll kind of show you how to add a new one from scratch. This will be used for a situation where um, you're calculating points at the end of the night. Now you can have a point scheme so you don't have to type in, let's be honest, after the race is over, it's probably past midnight by the time you've wrapped up all the things you have to wrap up on a race night. You're tired, you wanna go home, and you don't wanna to have to stand there 24 times and type in 150, 146, 142, or whatever your point structure is. So you can do that in advance and have the program add those points in one click. You can do the same for your purse and payout, or you can um, select a points scheme or a point structure that already exists via our sanction management. So, you know, points for the IMCA modified class for IMCA, those are right there as well. You can add those as well. So there's there's a number of them that go on there. But it's really easy to add a scheme as well. We don't want to do a lineup scheme, we want to do a point scheme. It's really self-explanatory when we jump into this, when we start adding points. If you want show-up points every night, you can add the show-up points right here. Uh, competitors who had a DNS, so they did not start, how many non-start points you get. <clears throat> um, the uh, minimum starting races we're seeing used a lot less often, but if a driver has to have raced two or three times with you or, or something like that, um, the, you know, in order to earn points, you know, they can, you can add that there. So we'll add a points breakdown here. If you want show up points, if you want passing points, and again, because we're adding a championship, this isn't passing points in terms of lining up a feature, but this is extra points for your points champion for, for uh, passing cars. We don't want that right now. So we start um, descending our points. 
First place gets 150, decreasing by three e every position. <clears throat> we'll add that. If you wanted to add all 20 of them at the same time, we'll do 23 because we already have two. <clears throat> this will start with, let's see, what would be decreasing by three? 147. We'll add that. And there you can see it added everybody at the same time. So I can go through here on a Wednesday afternoon and add my point structure for that night's racing or for the entire season or whatever. And, um, and that way, when I'm done with, the, done with the show at the end of the night, I select this scheme as opposed to having to type it in at the end of the night. Go ahead and save that. There's also other options in here um, to differentiate what points they're going to get based on if they got a DNF or a DQ or a black flag or things of that nature. So that's a good thing to have as well. And then if you don't have a minimum number of competitors for a night, then, um, you know, how much you want to deduct from each position based off of that as well. So you actually add that deduction as well. So those are the things that we can do. Um, in terms of pay schemes, it's very, very similar to what you're going to see here already. So we'll go back. We'll add a scheme. What happened there? And we'll add a payout scheme. <clears throat> um, and you'll see a lot of these things look very similar. It's designed that way. If, um, you know, you're going to give them show up money, this is how you can add that there. If uh, DNS, this is how you can add that. Adding the breakdown. And as you see, both in points and pay, you can add points for any feature, a dash. Heat races are qualifying. You can pay out for all of those things as well. Um, and it works just the same. How much money do they get for did not start and did not finish and disqualified and black flag? The only thing that you can't do in here is add in percentages, which is something that's frustrating. Um, I understand because a lot of people base their purse off of, uh, you know, each the next position gets a certain percentage of what the uh, total purse is. Um, so that's not something that we've got available. But you can still um, descend it by amount for each, you know, place or whatever else. So, you know, so if I wanted to go decreasing by $500 the entire rest of the way, 23 times. You can add all of those in one click as well. So it's definitely something to, to keep an eye on, but that's how you add a pay structure as well. And then when you're calculating points and pay at the end of your race night, you just one click. You click on the scheme name as opposed to typing it in at the end of the night yourself. <clears throat> so I'll discard those changes. The last one I'll show you here is passing points uh, for a scheme. Or lineup points, I guess you could say. <clears throat> you can. There's a number of lineup schemes for passing points um, built into the program already. You know, USMTS is in there. ASCS is in there. <clears throat> Wasota Challenge Series is in there. There's. You really want to take a look because there's a lot of them built in already. So something that already exists might do what you want it to do, but. You can also create your own from scratch if that's what you want to do. So for my heat races, I'll add in 1.5 uh, points for every position gained. <clears throat> They'll subtract out 0.5 points for every position lost. If you win your heat race, you get 10 points. You can decrease that by one every position all the way down to 10th. And add those in, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. If that's how you want to do it, you can do it so many different ways, whatever you want to do. <clears throat> you can uh, change this for DNFs. How many points do they get? DQs, black flags, things of that nature. And, uh, and then you can use this point <clears throat> structure to line up your feature with passing points as well. Um, there, I mean, obviously, with, uh, with, with race format and, and all those things, <clears throat> You know, you can add in qualifying sessions, multiple heat races, you know, one heat race, five features, whatever you want to do. There's so many things that you can do. And uh, passing points and position points definitely are a big part of that as well. Uh, when, when we're talking about the, the format of the race and what you want your structure of your format to be, a lot of times that stuff can be really complicated. 
And, uh, and I would always definitely advise you to have all of that stuff done and figured out during the week before race night. You don't want to be sitting here at 4 o'clock on a Friday thinking, hmm, how many passing points should I give out tonight? Or, you know, should I run a double heat race format tonight? Have that stuff figured out in advance. And if you have questions or concerns, this is largely one of the more complicated parts of the program just because there are so many options. Reach out to me via email, whatever else. I'm here to help. And I want to make that, you know, process seamless for you. I want to create a, a format for you guys that is easy for you guys to run and easy for your fans to understand as well. So with that, um, that's everything that I've got on my docket here for this first hour. Um, again, we're going to be back 7.30. I'll take a really in-depth look at registration and race management, you know, race night basically from start to finish, um, looking at the lineups that are right for you and your track, and then adding tickets as well. So there's a lot to get through tonight. Um, but for what we've seen today, a lot of this is really just the bare bones basics as it's the first session. Um, but I, I'm, I'm open for q and I'm open for questions so you guys can – you know, feel free to shout it out, unmute yourself, ask the question, and I'm here to answer it for, you know, the next 15 minutes or however long. If you don't feel like shouting it out, you can definitely put it into the chat as well. Well, if nobody's got anything for the time being, um, that works. That's fine. Um, I want to highlight one thing and, and, and talk to you guys about one thing. Um, I know that um, March 3rd is uh, the night, the day that we're going to be kind of putting a, a Wasoda lens on everything. I know Wasoda, um, you know, asks and, uh, and requires um, folks from their tracks to come to some of these webinar sessions. Um, so definitely circle March 3rd if you're a Wasoda track. Um, we're going to largely be doing the same thing on March 10th. That's where we'll kind of have a lens um, that goes to, um, you know, using sanction classes and sanction management and things of that nature for IMCA. And then as we uh, go on further down the list, we're going to have um, CR USA Crate Race in USA and, uh, and USRA. We'll talk about those guys as well as we get further through the weeks. So again, every Monday and Wednesday for the next few weeks, that's uh, for this week, the first and the third. Um, but then for the next three weeks, we'll be doing these. Here we go. Has the formula or program been created that will allow us to do lineups for two heat races, passing points, but changing up who's in each heat so the drivers aren't racing with the si same drivers for both heats, but still inverting? Um, there's, uh, there, there, we've, we've actually, I would recommend that you take a look at some of the carding lineups for that particular uh, question. There's a couple of carding lineups that I want to show you. Um, a carding lineup from heat races, or for our, uh, that's actually, that's a feature one. Let me get back to the heat race. Here we go. There's one that's called uh, carding four, six, eight. So they'll run two heat races and it's an exact inversion from the first set of heat races for the second set. Um, so if you started pull of the first heat race, um, the first time through, then the second round of heat races, you'll start tail in, Charlie. It's an exact inversion that way. Um, and you want to make sure you have an even number of heat races for all of these. There's also another one that's carding pill draw for two heat races. And this is a complete randomization. So this is going to be a little bit closer to what you're talking about. And this one's fairly new. Um, so you'll run your first set. You've got, you know, 40 drivers. You're going to run four heat races. Um, and they're all going to be based on pill draw. And then you'll run a second set of four heat races. Um, so it's not like one guy is going to be in heat one and two. They'll, they'll wait for the second set, but then it'll be another complete randomization. So basically think of it as kind of a, a, a second pill draw within the event. And then you can use that as well. And I know we talked about that for uh, the Wild West Mod Tour. I don't want to give anything away if they if they went to a different something else. But that, that's, uh, that, that's what I would point you to if you want that complete randomization as opposed to just a straight invert. And then you can, you know, apply your passing point lineups uh, to those two heat races to get your feature lineups. Um, Cameron, if that's not exactly what you're looking for, um, I guess what exactly are you looking for to do if you don't want an invert or a randomization? Yeah, 
Yeah. In, in terms of creating a custom lineup, I'll answer that question here. Um, we do offer custom lineup creation um, for folks, so so we can create a custom lineup. Although I will say um, that that's only available to certain, um, uh, you know, certain options. So if you're on the plus plan, certain plans. If you're on the plus plan for race management, custom lineups isn't something that's included in that. Um, but if you have one of the higher plans, then we can start talking about um, creating a custom lineup for you. The platinum plan gets you one. The uh, partner plan gets you four. Um, so if you um, so if you are looking for a custom lineup, um, you know you want to make sure you're on the right plan there. Um, Cameron, I'll, I'll reach out to you tomorrow um, during the day. Um, so shoot me an email, um, austin.lloyd at myracepass.com, um, with the, you know kind of exactly what your what you want your format to be, and I'll see if I can point you in the right direction. Um, because you know, yeah, I mean, we, we, I, you're kind of walking a fine line between the two things. And I want to make sure I understand completely before I uh, answer the question. Um, so, I'll, like I said, I'll reach out to you specifically. So send me an email here, and I'll reach out to you specifically tomorrow. Um, beyond that, um, is there anything else anybody's got here um, for today? Um, otherwise, we can wrap up, and I'll see you again in about an hour and ten minutes. Sure. Yeah, invert with a shift. I'll have to do some more research on that, Linda. Thank you. Um, I, you know, that, that makes more sense. That makes it a little bit more clear for me. I'll, I'll do some research on that and see if that's – I don't believe that's something that we have right now um, built in, so we might have to look at you know a custom lineup or something like that or, or what the demand is for it. Um, but thanks, everybody, for taking part. I know that you're taking part out of your evening, um, and I know that's a sacrifice. I got two small kids too, so I, I know it's a sacrifice for a lot of you guys. So I definitely appreciate it. I appreciate your interest. Um, with, uh, you know, with my race pass and being customers and whatever else and clients. Um, so thanks for being a part of it and I'll see you at, at seven 30.